Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I wanted to go ahead and create a two-part video here where not only do I show you the different results from Ideogram to GPT Dolly 3, but I also want to give you a real application as to how I would use it and what I would do from somebody who sells a lot of print-on-demand designs on a daily basis. So I haven't visited Ideogram in a long time and I wanted to make a poster um, but you guys know I kind of backed away from it just because I felt like there was better alternatives out there. And I wanted to make a poster that says something like this, like something to the effect of the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? Which comes from one of the Psalms in, in, the, in the Bible. But anyways, uh, the point is, is that I wanted to come up with a design, but I couldn't really think of anything at the moment, right? And so what I did was it came to me. Uh, I said, why don't I create... Why don't I ask the GPT to do it for me? But before I did that, Ideogram immediately came in my head, and I said, let me give it to Ideogram first. And so I gave the concept to Ideogram literally seven minutes ago, and I think it did a phenomenal job, you know? Now, the obvious problem, and, and most people are going to say this is, well, the spelling is jacked up. It's all messed up. It's not right. It's not proper, etc. And you're absolutely correct. But the function of the design and the concept of the design is absolutely beautiful, right? You, the, the Ideogram has a very good understanding, to me at least, of how to, you know, control colors. Like, for example, like different palettes and things like that. How to control colors and integrate them within each other. You know what I'm saying? There, It's very, very, um, it's very nice, you know, the way they do it, right? But... Like I said, I can't use this kind of art. There's not much I could really do with it. Um, even if I erase certain parts of it, there's not much I could do with it. So what do I do? I go over here, I go to GPT, and I tell it to do the exact same thing. So this is the first part of the video where we're talking about the comparison, right? I told it to do the exact same thing with the same prompt, right? And it came out like a mock-up. So I told it, I said, I don't want a mock-up. You know, recreate it. So then it created this. And to me, in my opinion... If we just look at this art style and we look at something like this or something like this or something like, you know, one of these four, whatever it is, I think this style looks a lot better than this style. This is just my opinion. I could be wrong, um, but opinion wise, I like this much better, right? In terms of the style. So what's next, right? Well, here's the thing. I wanted the chat GPT because I know they're very good with like typing letters as opposed to, you know, the other AI, Ideogram, I, I wanted it to, to kind of do, you know, understand what I'm really looking for, which is something like these type of designs. So basically, I just gave this design and I, I gave it to it, to the GPT, which is amazing because you can provide images to the GPT. And I said, what would be the prompt that you can reverse engineer to produce an image like this? And it gave it to me here. So it, it put it in parentheses right here. And this is where we're moving into the second part of the video here, where we're actually going to test this live. So the first part is, yeah, clearly Ideogram in this case, in this case, takes the win for this basic prompt. Now, keep in mind, I put this basic prompt here in Ideogram and I put it in GPT. And clearly, in my opinion, uh, Ideogram wins for the style that I was looking for. I'm not saying GPT is bad. I'm just saying for the style. But I know GPT is much more powerful, like extremely powerful. So I know that I can actually kind of engineer or teach GPT what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and, and use its own words here and copy and paste this prompt and make one small change to it, which is going to be just the text that I, that I want, right? And let's go ahead and read it first. It says, create a vintage inspired poster with the phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, using distressed topography. The text should have a rustic feel with worn edges and a textured look as if it has been weathered or aged. Arrows should flank the Lord at the top, and decorative lines should separate the phrases for visual interest. The color scheme should be a dark background with a lighter text to stimu uh, simulate chalkboard art. Include ornamental swirls or flourishes at the bottom to frame want. Interesting. So at the bottom frame to uh, want. Let's give it a shot. I mean, let's try it. So let's go ahead and hit send. 
and uh, or you know submit whatever and and let's see what this thing can do and we're just gonna view this right here right now live um, let's see what's gonna happen I'm actually pretty excited but and and honestly behind the scenes guys I'm I'm hoping that uh, I don't have to pause this video because I'm waiting for a phone call right now from someone so um, I'm kind of anticipating like wanting it to speed up but anyways let's go ahead and see what this thing can actually produce here okay so still it's not like it's not like this right so let me go ahead and give it a shot here we're gonna take this this same prompt we're gonna paste it again but I'm gonna say also use this image I provide as a ideal look for the style poster that I want and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take multiple of these screenshots and just drag them and drop them right in. So I'm going to take this, boom, take it, paste it right here. I'm going to take a screenshot here, boom, take it, paste it, okay? And paste it here, okay? Uh, I'm going to take it, boom, paste it, right? Just like that. And, of course, we're going to do the last one. Boom, take it, paste it right there let's go ahead and drag that and it should be at this point with you know given more information now if it just so happens where it doesn't come out the way we want I still have another solution and you guys know what the solution is actually some of you do some of you don't um, I'm gonna take the image and I will upload it into canva and I'll ask Canva to remove, um, uh, grab the text. There's a tool within Canva called the Text Grabber, okay? Um, and I think you uh, you guys should, are enjoying this tutorial so far because this is one of the most practical, easy tutorials that anyone could pretty much do. No difficulty. It's not complicated. But once again, let's go ahead and wait for this image to be created. And let's see, okay? But my only solution would be, if this doesn't work, and, and you were sitting here and you don't want to take too long to prompt it. And I'm sure you could do better by prompting it in a better way. Because at the end of the day, the AI is very strong and, and very powerful. But um, what I would personally do just to make the moves that I would, you know, work as fast as possible is I would take screenshots, put them in Canva, and then use the text grabber, which I'll show you in the next, you know, few minutes here if this does not work. Okay, so yeah, once again, this is not the style I was looking for. Does it look good? It looks phenomenal, okay? But this is not exactly, exactly what I was looking for. The spelling is a little jacked up. I'm not going to lie to you. But without a doubt, let's go ahead and move into Canva, and I'll show you what I would do next. Okay, guys, so essentially what I did right here is I took the screenshot of the image, since this is not going to be what I'm looking for. I took a screenshot of this image, and I'm, I uploaded it into Canva, okay? At this point in time, I'm going to enlarge the image, just so I can get a good view of it here, and maybe zoom in for you guys. And what I'm going to attempt to do here is I'm going to click edit, you know, the photo, and then I'm going to click on the grab text, Okay, so what this is going to do within Canva is Canva is going to recognize a similar font associated with the image, and it's going to pull the text from the actual image. And by the way, I'm not an affiliate of Canva. I have no reason to promote them. I'm just simply showing you some of the things here that I could do. So I have a bunch of, of images and things going on here. What I need to do is I need to take this, and I need to minify it, like make it smaller and put it to the left side here. And then what I'm going to do is pull up the image again and move it to the right hand side. So as you can see, I pulled the original form of the image here. And then this is the canvas version that's been edited. And so what I'm looking to do at this point is I'm looking to mimic this poster as best as I can. But essentially making it easier to... Um, you know, add the right text and all that. So here we have this whole text right here. We have different fonts, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and firstly, I'm going to move this to the side because what I really want to do is I want to extract the text. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy this twice. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this text or actually copy it three times because there's three lines of text here. And I'm going to delete 
each line of text in each copy. So for example, here I want this one to have just the word Lord in it. Here I want this one to have just the word, you know, the parts is my, and then here we have the word the, okay? And what I did here was essentially I'm separating and segmenting this part. So I have the, and then I have Lord, and then we have is my, okay? And I'm gonna take this, right? And I'm just going to clean it up just slightly, just so I can handle this a little bit better. And I'm gonna zoom in here. And you guys can start seeing how this is about to start forming. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start doing the same thing here. So we have the word shepherd. I shall not want. So the, the spelling is all jacked up here. So I'm going to take this, copy it, copy it again. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to type in the word shepherd and just delete the rest of this. Okay, here. So we have the word shepherd. All right. And then here we're going to have I shall not right so I shall not I shall not just like that and then we have the word want so I'll take this and then this section here and just have the word want right here okay let's go ahead and leave this there and what I'm gonna do is now I want to try to mimic some of the details here so let's put this together so I have the Lord is my shepherd. Let's go ahead and take this. Let's move this here. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, here's the thing, okay? In the middle, we have the word shepherd, and it's like almost bolded, right? And there's a critical difference here. The critical difference in this design is that, for me, um, the want is about the same size. The I shall is the long part. So if the I shall is the long part and shepherd is the short part, I'm going to switch the effect. I'm going to put the lines next to the word shepherd, right? Just like this, kind of like that. And I'm going to put I shall not want as the long one, but with bigger text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a different font that I can apply here. So for example, I'll just let me pick something random, not random, but you guys know what I mean. Um, Let's, let's leave the font for a second. Let's just wait a second here. So here we have the Lord is my shepherd. And this is, what font is this? This is a script. Playlist script. That's the font that the word the is. And I could see an attempt of that here. So the I shall part, we're going to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and type in playlist script. Okay, we'll find the font. Boom. I shall not. There we go. Okay. Let me go ahead and remove this. I'm not sure why I zoomed out, but anyways, I shall not, right? Just like this, we have the word want. Want should match the, the same font as the word Lord, and we'll see if it does. Sunday font, Sunday font, that's fine. Okay, and now we're going to start adding some of these details. So, th by the way, this could be improved. I'm just doing a basic tutorial here for this YouTube video, and with the fonts and everything. So I don't want to be here for too long just to kind of prove to you guys how, how this is going to work. So essentially we have like some little arrows here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for arrows uh, with quiver. I'm pretty sure, I don't know how to spell quiver. So quiver, let me see. Is that how you spell quiver? Uh, arrows with a quiver. What if I just spell quiver? Let's see. Does anything come up? Uh, let's, how about arrow? Okay, let's look for an arrow here. Um, what we could do is we could do something like this. And it doesn't have to be exact, but we could take something like this and we can match it to the same color style that exists here or, or close to it. Um, and what I'll do is I will start putting things like this here copy this and then flip it just like that and make sure it's on the same height and uh, space and uh, everything like that okay so it's sy symmetrical we have is my which it's gonna have like a line so I'm gonna search for the word line okay and let's see here I don't like this one I don't like this style let's go back let's search line again and let's see these are okay but um, let's go to graphics. We're going to have something better. Yep, this is 
This is interesting. We could go with something like this. And then what we'll do is we'll switch the color once again, and then we will cut the image. So we'll cut the image kind of like that, and we'll put it right here, right, just like this. And I'll copy it, and once again, flip it. So just like this, all right? We have the Lord is my, and, I, and notice I didn't copy it exactly, but it's similar. I shall not want, all right? So we're going to take the same thing here. And, you know, we could add these little details here. And if you notice, in the last image here, there was like a picture of a sheep and like other ornate textures. So I could just type in the word here, ornate. And there's a lot of different textures here. So I could do something like this. All right, something like that. You know, I put it here. Make sure to match the color, of course, or even something similar. Maybe something like this. Sometimes it's a little too much details with the ornate stuff, but uh, let me let me undo it because I, I do feel like it was too much. Um, and I could do something like this. I could type in sheep, right? And we obviously need a certain kind of graphic, so um, something that applies a little bit more, and you know something like that, and leave it. Leave this here. Take this. Flip it just to make it symmetrical, something like that. So now I can get rid of this. I can take this and just blow it up, okay, in terms of size. And it will look somewhat presentable. I mean, once again, keep in mind, this is a quick tutorial just for YouTube, but I would do something like this. You know, if I can't get the AI to kind of handle it for me, um, I would do something like this. And this looks pretty decent. Uh, you can do this as a t-shirt design, you can do this as a poster design, you know, pretty much anything. So if I wanted to even add some grunge to it, I can add the word grunge, search for something like this, make it match the background color, and see the effect that it gives it now. Like, it literally does change uh, the image. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it was beneficial to you. And uh, yeah, have fun, all right? I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out, bye.